the market's at a really interesting place, right? It is stuck. Now, it may not feel stuck because certain things have been screaming. So I'm going to show you exactly why I'm saying it's stuck. It's absolutely going to get unstuck. We just don't know by what asset or sub asset group. So stick around. I'm going to talk about why I'm saying it's stuck and what we can do about it. Hey, everybody, this is RC Pack with Ferrell's Wealth. And my focus is to make sure you retire strong and stay retired strong. And a lot of that has to do with making sure that your portfolio is following the market, the stock market, the bond market, the gold market, the cash market, all of those markets to make sure it's aligned to it. Now, we have an interesting situation going on today. Let's call this mid-2023. I mean, we're pretty close to it. We're only about a week off from literally the mid part of 2023. You've got the NASDAQ and tech and semis screaming. Now, they fell pretty hard last year. Everyone seems to forget that. And then the other hand, free money, no risk. You have basically cash giving you almost 5.5% soon to go higher. So there's some competition going on. I want to show you something that's really interesting going on in all of the markets, in stocks and bonds and commodities and talk about why we're really close to a go, no go point on moving higher and maybe having like a 1999. That's where the NASDAQ went up 90% in a year. Or are we really looking at something where we're gonna go sideways and down for the next year? Let's jump over to the price charts and let's see what I wanna start with. Let's just start with the Qs here. So the Qs, which is the NASDAQ 100, 100 largest stocks in the NASDAQ composite, so this is where all the sellers are hiding. This is where the selling is going to come in. Now, this symbol, NASDAQ 100, fell 35% last year. This year, it's up about 40%. Okay, so it's about to come into this overhead resistance. Now, that overhead resistance is going to come up over and over. Here's the S&P by itself coming into the overhead resistance. It's just now kind of getting into that weather system there. So we're, we should expect volatility. And we're going to see this all over the place. Now, let me just jump over to bonds for a second. Even though the weather system is not way up here, there is overhead supply right there. So bonds have the same problem. There's selling going on up here. Now, it got to it first, right? This asset class got to kind of this weather system first. And that's why we're seeing a lot of sidewaysness with bonds. Okay, back to stocks. And then I will get to commodities. It was actually Europe that got up here first. Now, Europe from the October low is up about 50%, 53%. Pretty amazing. But as you can see, it's still up here in this weather system. It looks like it wants to break through. If it breaks out, that is really good news for all equities, except probably China, because China is an absolute mess. And I would stay away from China. Um, here's China right now. It is not coming out. There's a lot of problems you can tell. Um, even if you look at China in local currency, it doesn't actually looks worse. So China is a stay away from. So that is a problem because it's the second largest economy on the planet. But we're just going to set that over to the side. The market is aware of that. So here you have Europe. It's looking good. It's about to break out. It's looking like it wants to. It's going to almost break out to new lifetime highs. And then you have international here, which officially is all world XUS, just right into that noise, right? I call it a weather system. Some people call it a selling box, but it's right up in there. And it's basically stopped, right? Almost for three months, EFA has not done anything. And so this is how bull markets work. One leads and then momentum rotates out and rotates into something else. Um, and then of course you have XLK, which is a subsector of stocks, right? It's the technology sector. And it is just right up there in the noise. It's right up there. Same thing with a sub subsector, semiconductor. So semiconductors are leading tech. Tech is leading NASDAQ. And this year, the NASDAQ's been leading stocks in the US. And then here it is, SMH, looking almost like tech. So they are up against some resistance. And again, if this breaks out, AI breaks out, by the, by the way, AI is tech, because who is AI going to help? Companies that have coders. And what I'm reading is that 
AI and you know chat GPT and those type of large language models, LLMs, they're just making coders as much as seven times more efficient. So if you wanna play AI, just buy companies that have a lot of coders, which is tech. And so that's what we're seeing over and over. And even when I look at agriculture here, so this is just a certain part of commodities, not all commodities. Same thing, ag is up here in this overhead resistance too. Not commodities, commodities are still trending down, but agriculture is now up into this also. That's inflationary. And then I wanna make sure, here's gold. Now gold has in many ways gone nowhere for, let's see, we got July now, July, July, two and a half years. Or if you look at where it is here, that's where it was back in July, three years ago of 2020, right? So what you have here is this overhead resistance, people coming in and selling their ounces of gold once it breaks basically above about $1,900. And so gold has this upper resistance, bonds have an upper resistance, stocks do, whether it's tech stocks, semis, international Europe, not China. But this is what we're seeing all over the place is this overhead resistance. Some things are breaking through, and so that gives us a sign. Actually, home builders are breaking through that overhead resistance, um, which is pretty interesting. Apple's doing the same thing. Uh, most people know NVIDIA is it broke up and through. It actually gapped above that. So they could be leading. It could also be a false breakout, right, to lure people in. Here, Apple is above its overhead supply. You could even maybe make it that big. It just kind of marched right through its overhead supply from that 2021 moving higher. So let me land this plane and kind of talk about where we're going here. We're halfway through 2023. I had to hesitate and actually think what year it was. It's moving faster and faster. We have two more rates coming. Powell said as much, two more rates. The futures market says there's a 76% chance as of today that at the July Fed meeting, they're going to raise another quarter point. That means 55 and that means one more after that to 5.75. Now, that's you can go get a three-month treasury and get almost 6% somewhere this year. We'll see how that weighs on basically AI, because that's what's going on right now. This is an AI revolution, which is really a efficiency revolution, which is really a higher profit margin. That's what's going on. Like Profit margins should go up. These tech companies, any company that really is using coders, they will get more efficient, which means more profitable. So profitability of AI in this new wave, kind of the wave, you know, the internet wave like that, the late 90s, that's one thing. But you have this huge downward pressure from the Fed raising rates all the way up to 5.75%. So we'll see, and we'll know by looking at the price charts. Now, why this matters to retirement is because you want to have a retirement portfolio that is following price not day trading, not week trading, but following the direction because the market can go higher and the market often does go higher for multi-year periods, eight, 10-year periods. And if this is a breakout, this could go four years. There's no reason why it couldn't. I mean, the internet started becoming bubbly and I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. Internet stocks really started becoming bubbly in about 1997, three years really three years before the actual bubble popped in March of 2000, okay? Now it's one example, but the point is things can go crazy for a while, which may happen. And if they don't, we'll start seeing prices turn back. So I'll keep watching that for you. Again, if you have curiosity how your own portfolio might be doing, we often find that people have something called replication, hurting their portfolio. That's where you're literally leaking out about $35,000 per year per million. In fact, I just did a portfolio x-ray for a prospective client and they're actually leaking close to 100,000 per year per million because they had a traditional you know, 12, actually they had nine mutual funds. They are at a very well-known top tier, think Morgan Stanley, Raymond James, Edward Jones, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, one of those top names. And they had nine funds and they're just unnecessarily 
leaking, in their case, about $100,000 per million per year. If you want to know what a portfolio extra is, get on a calendar. It is in the description. They are fascinating to do. Thank you, everyone, for being in my world. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. All three of those things make a difference. Thanks for being in my world. I appreciate you, and I will see you on my next video. Thank <laughs> you.